Right now, following the recent five-year anniversary of the Parkland shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School, hear from students that helped organize Wisconsin's March for Our Lives rally and learn how local health officials are working to reduce gun violence in Madison. Plus, the Lake Mills community is mourning the sudden loss of its fire chief tonight. How friends and family are remembering Todd Yandre and the legacy he left behind. Those top stories and more coming up right now at 10. Thanks for joining us tonight. We begin with a live look at the Capitol because even those guys may have been clear today that won't be the case during your Monday morning commute. Our first one weather team has issued an alert day from tonight into tomorrow. Meteorologist Alex Arrington joins us now from the patio. So Alex, what can we expect through tonight? Yeah, McKenna and folks, it, the conditions are going to deteriorate really, really quickly overnight tonight. We're going to see a pretty impactful weather system bring freezing rain potential north of Madison, heavy rain, and maybe even some flooding conditions for the rest of southern Wisconsin. And just look at Doppler track right now. Look how quickly the precipitation is spreading into the state of Iowa. It's racing to the north and towards the east, heading towards southern Wisconsin. And temperatures could be just cold enough in parts of southern Wisconsin for that freezing rain potential. This is our six hour future track radar. Look at that as we move towards the 4 a.m. hour, the greens, the yellows, and the pinks moving right into southern Wisconsin along and south and west of I-90. As we head later into Monday morning, that precipitation is really going to be moving into southern Wisconsin along with the wind. The clouds are moving in, and that's holding the temperatures up to the south and to the west. It's part of the weather story. That warmer air is going to be moving into the area. High temperatures today up around 40 degrees, a little bit cooler to the north and towards the east. Temperatures tomorrow are going to be uh, in the upper 30s trade around 40 degrees as well, but areas towards the north will be just cold enough to see some of that frozen precipitation. Just how much ice and just how much water are we going to be talking about? We'll break that down in just a couple of minutes. All right, thanks, Alex. To prepare for the storm, the Madison Streets Division was out salting residential streets today. Crews focused on areas that have a persistent hard pack of snow and ice, with officials noting that the top of a hard pack could make for some dangerously slippery roads tomorrow morning. Crews are using a limited amount of salt tonight, so the treated areas may not be clear to bear pavement by the storm. Because of this, be sure to use extra caution when walking on sidewalks tomorrow. And just a reminder, you can stay up to date on the weather with our first storm forecast weather app. It is hourly forecast, road conditions, and the latest radar. You can download it for free in your phone's app store. Just search WISC weather. New at 10 at tonight, the Lake Mills Fire Department and its surrounding community is mourning the sudden loss of Fire Chief Todd Yandre. Our Andrew Banstra spoke with the 61-year-old's close friends and family and shares how they're now honoring Yandre's life and legacy. After 41 years of serving the Lake Mills Fire Department, Fire Chief Todd Yandre passed suddenly on the 16th. Here today, we're in Lake Mills talking to those who knew him best. He was so nice for a person to everybody and cared about everybody that he came across. That's how Todd's cousin Randy remembers him, a genuinely good soul that serviced his community. Yes, it was a deepest shock because uh, he was definitely well-loved in the community. For Brian, who's lived in Lake Mills his whole life and was friends with Todd, this is a gut punch. He watched Todd serve their community his entire life, from working his way up from firefighter to fire chief. And we're going we're to deeply miss him, but he was just a wonderful uh, man, a wonderful um, spokesperson in our community, and uh, loved his family. We just, uh, we just treasure his memory. He remembers Yandre as someone who was one with the community, intertwined. Always being at the events, whether it's uh, the high school events through his children, and I've got grandchildren. Uh, he would be for, for church services. He would uh, also be with the town hall. The fire chief is a pillar in any community, especially in Lake Mills. Yandre lived up to his stature every day, so much so that Governor Evers honored his life by ordering flags to half staff. And yet we knew them personally, and it was just them. They, they wanted to do that just to, uh, uh, just to serve and just to show that they cared for us as a community here in Lake Mills. So we deeply miss them, but yet we're so grateful for what they did for us here in Lake Mills. For his cousin Randy, he remembers Todd as the kid who was the best athlete around, and that success translated into service. We uh, grew up together as kids and uh, hung out at each other's houses in the summers, and uh, he was a really good guy. Everyone we spoke with today said Todd will be immensely missed, but his legacy will never be forgotten. In Lake Mills, Andrew Vanstra, News 3 Now. When Yandre wasn't at the fire station, he was an adjunct professor for Madison College and a member of the Wisconsin Society of Fire Instructors. 
Three people are recovering tonight after a crash in Broadhead this morning. Emergency responders were called to the intersection of East 9th Avenue and 23rd Street just before 9 a.m. on reports of a two-vehicle crash. According to police, a sedan was traveling north on 9th Avenue when a minivan traveling east on 23rd Street ran a stop sign and collided with the sedan. The two people inside the sedan and a passenger in the minivan were all taken to a local hospital where they are expected to survive. It's been five years since the mass shooting at a Parkland High School sparked some of the largest gun violence prevention protests in the country. And as our Nicole Herzog explains, members of Gen Z are still at the forefront of that movement. When is it going to be enough? A question members of Gen Z have been asking for nearly their whole lives. With Sandy Hook, we were in elementary school. I was almost the exact same age as those children. When Parkland happened, we are, you know, within a year or two. Five years ago, we saw these chilling images. A Valentine's Day marked by tragedy when a gunman opened fire on students and staff at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School, killing 17 people and injuring 17 others. Just a day before the five-year anniversary of the Parkland shooting, another mass shooting at Michigan State University. For some UW-Madison students, it hit close to home. We just feel heartbroken for this peer campus where we see ourselves in that student body. We see ourselves in the people that are injured and were sadly killed. It prompted them to write an op-ed for the Daily Cardinal student newspaper. And we are not going to stay quiet about these issues because it affects every single person on this campus, every single person at a Big Ten campus, and literally any student in the school in this country. They're not the only students at the forefront of the gun violence prevention movement. The shooting in Parkland prompted some of the largest gun violence prevention protests in the country, many of them led by teenagers and young adults. In Wisconsin, the March for Our Lives protest was almost entirely organized by people under 25, followed by walkouts at high schools across the state. We kind of realize that it will be our generation that's likely going to be finally passing legislation that's going to make a difference and finally start to change this. Because I think our generation has really been the one to bear the burden, bear the cost, bear the lost lives. Another solemn anniversary as people in New York City today are commemorating the 30th anniversary of the 1993 World Trade Center bombing. People could be seen gathering at the National 9-11 Memorial in downtown Manhattan this morning where the World Trade Center used to be. Today, a ceremony was held to mark the tragedy that took the lives of six people. Among the speakers in attendance was Senator Chuck Schumer, who spoke to this event three decades ago and highlighted New York's resiliency in times of despair, saying in part, just like the memory of the six people who were tragically killed 30 years ago, the unique spirit of New York lives on. In international news tonight in Italy, at least 58 migrants are dead after their wooden boat broke apart after hitting rocks off the country's eastern coast this morning. The body of an infant and several women and children have been pulled from the Mediterranean Sea and around 80 people clinging to wooden shards in the water had to be rescued. It's unclear where the ship had launched from, but the survivors are reportedly from Pakistan, Afghanistan and Iran. In Kenya, First Lady Jill Biden is winding down her trip to Africa. She spent the last day of her trip visiting drought response sites. This visit comes as the Horn of Africa has experienced, quote, the worst drought in seven generations, leaving four million people with insufficient access to food. Biden says the United States is providing about 70 percent of the money that's going into the region to help and spent today calling on other nations to step up their aid to this region. To the crisis in Ukraine now, Republican House Foreign Affairs Chairman Michael McCall is calling on the Biden administration to give Ukraine more weapons systems. Today, McCall said lawmakers are planning on putting in measures into spending bills, prioritizing weapons for Ukraine. He argues that not providing those weapons plays right into Putin's hands. But the fact is, if we don't give them everything, if they don't get the momentum right now <clears throat> with the Russian offensive coming into country right now, uh, they have a window of time with the counteroffensive. Uh, that's why it's important when I talk to these top military officers, give them everything they ha- that you can now so they can win this thing. When we give them what they can, uh, what they can really use and ask for, they win. Uh, when we slow walk and slow pace this thing, uh, it drags it out. And that's precisely what Putin wants. President Joe Biden and senior administration officials have said that for now, 
Ukraine does not require those advanced fighter jets. The head of the U.S. Central Intelligence Agency says the alliance between Russia and Iran is moving at a pace that is, quote, disturbing. Today, CIA Director William Burns reporting that Iran has already provided hundreds of armed drones to Russians, which are then being used in the nation's ongoing attack in Ukraine. Burns says that U.S. military leaders are concerned about what Russia, in turn, could do to help Iran. Russia is proposing to help the Iranians on their missile program and also at least considering the possibility of providing fighter aircraft to Iran as well. So it's, you know, quite disturbing set of developments. When asked about whether Iran's leaders have decided to pursue a nuclear weapon, Burns said they have yet to make a decision to resume their weaponization program. Still at tonight at 10, as temporary snap funds decrease, temporary snap increases expire, officials with Dane County food pantries are praising a recent boost in funding. After the break, we'll share how these funds will help feed hundreds more in the Madison area. Stay with us. We'll be right back on News 3 Now. Get a pound of strawberries for just $1.99 for National Strawberry Day, Monday at hy -Vee. That's right, your daily deal for Monday is one pound of basket and bushel strawberries for just $1.99, while supplies last only at hy -Vee. Join the circle of life at The Lion King. Experience the world's number one musical, don't miss your chance to see The Lion King, one of the most awe-inspiring productions ever brought to life on stage. Coming to Overture Center May 11th through 28th. Tickets on sale now at Overture.org. Styler Chevy Equinox RS like, uh, and Chevy Blazer RS. So captivating. You don't have to be an influencer to be an influencer. The, crowd go crazy. the RS family of Chevy SUVs definitely worth a follow. Well qualified buyers get 2.99% financing on all Equinox models or get $1,000 cash allowance on all 2023 Equinox models. Plus, current Chevy owners get an additional $750 cash allowance. Alien tape is strong enough to hold this fishbowl on a moving car. Just peel and stick and make anything stay in place quick. A wooden shelf, a basket to glass, rugs to the floor, and so much more. Alien tape sticks to brick, pavers, marble, tile, plastic, even leather. Nothing works better. Alien tape secures in seconds, then twist, pull, and rinse to reuse. You're dying to try it. Here's your chance to buy it. Call 1-800-490-1347 or go to tryaliantape.com. That's 1-800-490-1347. Announcing Madison Magazine's Best of Madison Readers Poll for 2023. Nominate the Best of Madison online today, including Don's Home Furniture for Best Furniture, Best Home Accessories, and Best Outdoor Living. Nominate all your favorites on madisonmagazine.com. When the snow flies in bike-friendly Madison, avid cyclists just keep on pedaling. It's a good time. News 3 Now's to Halil Mahadeen finds out what it takes from must-have gear to safety tips. Hitting the road with snow bikers, Monday at 10. Get a pound of strawberries for just $1.99 for National Strawberry Day, Monday at hy -Vee. That's right, your daily deal for Monday is one pound of basket and bushel strawberries for just $1.99, while supplies last only at hy -Vee. Joe McHale can't stay away. You're the first guest to come on for the second time. In celebration, I got a tattoo. <laughs> then a remarkable woman. We all have a storm. Mine just happens to be visible. On the next Jennifer Hudson Show at 3. You're watching News 3 Now at 10. In more local news tonight, officials with Dane County Food Pantries are praising a recent boost in funding amidst a recent changes to the Federal Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. Temporary increases in the program brought on during the pandemic will sunset at the end of the month, with about 20,000 Dane County residents expected to be negatively impacted. To help offset this, County Executive Joe Parisi recently announced $2 million in grants to local emergency food pantries. One of those recipients is the River food pantry set to receive $111,000. The river served about 4,600 people in January alone. And that number is significantly higher than January of last year when the pantry served about 3,500 people. Now this number is only expected to go up when the temporary SNAP benefits expire. The river's director of operations says these newly announced additional funds will really help meet the demand in our community. We're always working to ensure that we have enough products 
to be able to to meet the demand of of um, everyone who comes for groceries and not only just just have food to provide but have high quality food that also meets people's needs. The pantry reportedly plans to use the majority of the funds to buy more fresh produce, proteins, whole grains, hygiene products, and cleaning supplies. Alongside this, the pantry will now be able to install necessary shelving, pallets, and pallet racking to better store food and to add outdoor lighting to make the drive through pantry safer. Let's get a look at your first one forecast with meteorologist Alex Harrington. Hey, McKenna and folks, we've got updates to our alert day. We're adding a couple more counties for the wintry precipitation part of this impactful weather system heading towards southern Wisconsin for freezing rain, maybe a little bit of snow, but I think the freezing rain is the biggest potential for areas now all along and north of the Dells. This would include Juneau, Adams, Marquette, and Green Lake counties. The other part of this impactful weather system is going to be the heavy rainfall. We have a, a pretty heavy snowpack out there across much of the area, frozen ground, so the water's going to get into some of that snow it'll absorb some of it but not all of it so those susceptible areas most certainly could be looking at some flooding conditions let's take a look here at weather track here's the impactful weather system blowing up across portions of the central plains down through the southern plains severe thunderstorms over portions of kansas and oklahoma a couple tornadoes today we're now looking at severe weather here in southern wisconsin but that weather system is going to be sweeping towards the north and towards the east very 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 quickly look at this already knocking on the door of des moines right now with that impactful weather conditions. Well, let's take a look at our friend the future track model to show what this weather model is going to pinpoint for southern Wisconsin. Here knocking on the door as we head towards the wee hours of your Monday morning. There's the rain, maybe a couple of thunderstorms on the north side. That's the freezing rain. Could be looking at some impactful amounts of ice towards central and northern Wisconsin with this weather system just clipping the northern portion of our viewing area. Then the storm system sweeps on through the southern portion of the state. Temperatures briefly warm and then temperatures will cool down just a bit behind what will stick around though we will have gusty winds throughout this entire storm system here are those winter headlines to the north of the dells the winter weather advisories that have been expanded now to include green lake and marquette counties now and also juno and adams county where we could be looking at that ice accumulation just enough to make those roads slick for the work and school commute tomorrow morning. And then here we've had some updates, an inch to maybe an inch and a half of water for a good portion of southern Wisconsin that could bring some of those area streams and rivers across the area. Crawford County, Lafayette, Green Rock counties could be looking at just enough water to bring those area streams and those rivers up a bit. And then as that water percolates into the larger watershed, could be looking at the increased likelihood of some flooding conditions in some of the larger riverways as we go later Monday and into Tuesday with this impactful weather event. And then looking out into the future, going well out into March here, the chances of precipitation staying high. So we're going to stay in this wet pattern across much of the country. We'll do 30 tonight as those alert day conditions move into southern Wisconsin. An alert day for sure on your Monday. The heavy rain that mixed towards the north and windy conditions across all of southern Wisconsin. Could be looking at another weather system Tuesday going into Wednesday. After that, we're watching maybe another one Thursday going towards Friday. That looks like it's going to be more towards the south at this point in time, but something to watch as the weather pattern stays very active for us. Definitely going to be a busy week, so make sure to stay with First Warren Weather Team. For oh, the yes. Yep, Channel 3000 and the app as well. All right. Thanks, Alex. Yeah. Turning now to some health news tonight. As a new report from the Department of Energy suggests the COVID-19 pandemic most likely came from a laboratory leak in China. U.S. government officials have been divided over whether the pandemic was caused by a Chinese lab leak or merged naturally from the wild. A senior U.S. intelligence official told the Wall Street Journal that new information is what caused the department to make this updated assessment. The intelligence community has repeatedly noted that a lack of cooperation from Beijing has made it difficult to get to the bottom of the question on where COVID-19 originated. And some governmental limits may soon restrict telehealth prescriptions. This week, the Drug Enforcement Agency proposed new rules to require patients have an in-person medical evaluation before being prescribed most prescription medications by their doctors. Patients would still be able to get less addictive medications, such as antibiotics or birth control, prescribed to them by their doctors via telehealth. But prescriptions for other drugs to help with pain or sleep, for example, could still be prescribed via telehealth 
protocol, though, the patient would need an in-person evaluation before they could get a refill. One DEA official says the agency wants to expand telemedicine, but with guardrails that prevent the online overprescribing of controlled medications that could cause harm. Health concerns and fear lingers among residents in East Palestine, Ohio, following the toxic train derailment more than three weeks ago. Now, federal teams are conducting health surveys in the area ordered by President Joe Biden, who, as Isabel Rosales reports, is also responding to criticism about him not visiting the crash site. The cleanup and removal of contaminated soil continues from the site of the train derailment in East Palestine, Ohio, from February 3rd. The U.S. Environmental Agency is assuring residents that all the toxic waste will be disposed of in a, quote, safe and lawful manner at EPA-certified facilities. One thing that's been made clear to me is that everyone wants this contamination gone from the community. They don't want the worry and they don't want the smell. A White House official says members of the Federal Emergency Management Agency, EPA, and the CDC began distributing informational flyers and conducting health surveys over the weekend. According to the official, their goal is to reach 400 homes by Monday. What we need to come to grips with is the idea that more safety metrics, more rules and regulations, and perhaps some laws, and need to be passed quickly. Last week, the National Transportation Safety Board released its preliminary report on the investigation. It concluded that the wreck was 100% preventable. <laughs> Meanwhile, President Joe Biden currently has no plans to visit Ohio. On Friday, he defended his administration's response to the crisis. I had a long meeting with my team and what they're doing. You know, we were there two hours after the train went down, two hours. And so the idea that we're not engaged is just simply not, not there. The EPA is scheduled to hold its next public meeting for residents on March 2nd. I'm Isabel Rosales reporting. Still ahead, no Yana. News 3 Now First Warm Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. At Pick and Save, we want our... everyone. Extremist Dan Kelly wants abortion banned, even in cases of rape, incest, and the health of the mother. For years, Kelly was on the payroll of a radical anti-abortion group working to take away women's rights. On the court, Kelly will uphold Wisconsin's 1849 criminal abortion ban that strips women of their freedom to make personal decisions on abortion. Dan Kelly, an extremist who doesn't care about us. Like, yeah, uh, we so amazing. The stylish Chevy Equinox RS. Like, uh, and Chevy Blazer RS. So captivating. You don't have to be an influencer to be an influencer. The, crowd go crazy. the RS family of Chevy SUVs, definitely worth a follow. Well-qualified buyers get 2.99% financing on all Equinox models or get $1,000 cash allowance on all 2023 Equinox models. Plus, current Chevy owners get an additional $750 cash allowance. Turn on Bionic Spotlight Extreme 360, the motion-activated home defense light that looks just like a security camera. It detects even the slightest motion and automatically triggers six ultra-bright LED high beams. Call or go online and order your Bionic Extreme 360 for just $19.99. Plus, get free shipping on your entire order. To order, call 1-800-501-5956 or go online to buybionic360.com. Call now. To everyone who believes in tradition, come enjoy a few of ours from Wisconsin. People in Wisconsin love a good fish fry. Really love. And we love sharing it with guests everywhere. At Culver's, we still batter our North Atlantic cod by hand to order. And we cook it to a crispy, golden perfection just for you. For you. For you. So it's crispy outside, flaky inside. Let us take care of you. With some homegrown traditions we were raised on. From Wisconsin with love. Welcome to Delicious. Thanks for joining us tonight, and we'll see you back here at 10. Are you a fan of News 3 Now? How would you like a chance to work with the anchors here at News 3 Now and actually produce our newscast? 
If you are a strong writer, have an interest in news, a well-rounded education, and have a great attitude, we have all the resources needed to train you to be a valued part of our team. The only thing missing is you. Here's your opportunity. Come work with me and join our award-winning team. Apply online today. When your door is always open, so is the fridge. At Pick and Save, however you shop, in-store, pickup, or delivery, you get the same great prices, deals, and rewards. That's a win-win-win. Pick and Save, fresh for everyone. Every time the Bucks take the hardwood, they prove just how dangerous of a team they are. Despite losing Giannis on Friday night to a knee injury, the team managed to keep their win streak alive. It's the NBA. Uh, I think no matter where it is, up eight uh, with six minutes left or whatever, um, we feel like we always have a chance. Uh, we've come down or we've come back from a, a lot worse, maybe not in that time, but out the regular season with senior day and against 12th ranked Michigan. What a game for Bucky. They're trailing by one in the second half. Julie Pash Pishlova knocks down the jumper two of her game high 25. So now UW is on top. Michigan, they're not going anywhere just yet. They tie it up at 44. Now here comes Avery LaBarbera from distance. The Badgers lock up the lead for good. They upset Michigan 78 to 70. It's their first win over them since 2014. UW earns a first round bye for the Big Ten tourney. That begins on Wednesday. Coming into the weekend, Wisconsin men's basketball was listed as one of the last four teams into the NCAA tournament, according to Joe Lenardi's Bracketology Report. So clearly, if the Badgers want in, they got to be playing their best basketball, especially in round two with Michigan. Of course, this is another close one. You got less than 30 seconds in the game, down by one. Connor Seijan, he drains the J. Two of his new career high 24 points. Badgers sitting pretty in that final second. They're up by three. Max Klesman, he's going to try to keep it that way. He comes up with a monster block in the corner, but Hunter Dickinson negates it at the buzzer with a triple to send this game to overtime. Klesman getting it done on both sides of the ball this afternoon. He cashes in for three to give UW back the lead in OT, but an and one from Kobe Bufkin is going to lock it up for Michigan. Badgers fall 87 to 79 in overtime. They're going to split the series. Next up, the Badgers host fifth ranked Purdue on Thursday. Tip off at the Kohl Center, set for eight. And while the game didn't end how they would have wanted, Connor Asesian did make program history. He now has the most three pointers made by a freshman. Early second half, CE3 drained his only triple of the day, but that marked his 61st of the season. He passes Brad Davison's record, which was set in 2018 with 60. We'll be right back. Everyone is making room. Seriously? For the medicine cabinet's new essential, Binax Now, with reliable COVID-19 results in just 15 minutes. It's Auto Show. The deals start now, and so should you. Get started on your next Ford SUV, like Bronco, Explorer, or the new Escape. Get here to get a deal on the SUV's number one in brand loyalty. It's Auto Show. The deals start now, and so should you. During Auto Show, choose Flex Buy on Escape, Edge, or Explorer with 3.9% APR financing for 66 months plus 1,000 Auto Show cash. As a veteran of our country's armed services, you have already made the ultimate sacrifice. Why should you have to continue to do that? Through no fault of your own, you may be experiencing hardships, such as the inability to pay rent, utilities, or receive other life-sustaining services. And once again, you're called upon by your family to serve and protect. We want you to know we are here to support you. The Veterans Rental Assistance Program was created by and for people living in Wisconsin, with benefit approvals being issued to veterans in just days, not months. It's not easy to ask for a hand up, but we are clear in our mission. No Wisconsin veteran should ever have to face homelessness or lose heat, power, or water again. 833 W-I-S-V-R-A-P. That's 833-947-8727. Us. This isn't us. Uh -huh. Is it? When did we get so connected to our devices and so disconnected from each other? And when our phones have turned us into this? LT? What do you do when you're a company that sells them? We gotta fix this. 
It's time to find what we're missing. Join us in taking a break from our devices. Take the phones down for five challenge for five days, five hours, or even just five minutes. Feels good. <laughs> and let's find us again. U.S. Cellular, built for us. This is a Tempur-Pedic mattress, and it's designed to help make aches and pains a thing of the past. Because only Tempur-Pedic uses our one-of-a-kind, incredibly adaptive temper material to relieve pressure points and support your body in a way no other mattress can. Molecule by molecule and millimeter by millimeter. All night, every night. Save up to $500 on select Tempur-Pedic adjustable mattress sets and get a $300 gift. Denver Mattress, the easiest way to get the right Tempur-Pedic. Do we still need these pregnancy tests? Everyone is making room. Yeah, no. For the medicine cabinet's new essential, Binax Now, with the same technology doctors use to test for COVID-19. Channel 3000 Plus. Watch from your streaming media player or mobile device. You're watching News 3 Now at 10. All right, before we go tonight, Alex, sounds like we might have a little bit of a messy morning commute tomorrow. Yeah, especially for areas north of the Dells. Let's go right to the alert day graphics. If you're north of the Dells, watch out for some freezing rain, some slick roads as we go, especially early into Monday, up through about maybe the noon hour. For the rest of southern Wisconsin, we're just looking at heavy rain and possibly some localized flooding. All right, thanks, Alex, and thanks for joining us tonight. Easter Now This Morning starts at 4.30.